Do you remember the first promise you ever made? Probably a silly question, isn't it? Considering most of our cognitive memory happens around the age of three or four. Your first promise was probably like my first promise. I promise, Mom and Dad, I'll clean my room. I promise, little brother, I do love you. I promise to the friend on the playground, you're my best, best friend. Those are probably our first promises. Do you remember the first promise you ever broke? Probably equally a little difficult type of question. Probably something that you said you would do and didn't do. But I bet you remember the last promise you broke. Was it the phone call that you said you would make and you didn't make it? Was it the visit you promised to do but never happened? Was it that lunch appointment that you missed and had to hurriedly text and say, sorry, something came up. I'm not going to be able to make it, but it really didn't come up. You just forgot. All of us are probably rattling through our brains going, oh my gosh, what have I forgotten to do over the last week or maybe the last month? We all make promises and we all break promises. Does God make promises? Of course he does. God promised Adam and Eve. Adam, Eve, you sinned, and because of your sin, you came from the dust. You'll go back to dust. But I will take care of you. God promised Noah, because of the wickedness of the world, I'm going to bring rain upon this world, and floodwaters will come and break out of the earth, and the whole world will will be covered in a great flood of water and I'm going to destroy the earth, but I will make for you an ark and you and your family will survive. And when they survived, what did God give? The rainbow of promise. God promised Abraham land, descendants, and blessings because Abraham, I want to make in you a family of faith and I will build in you a great people and I will give you this land and I will give you descendants and blessings. God promised Moses that through him he would deliver his people from the bondage of Egypt into this promised land. God promised David that out of him would come a king that would rule forever and ever, the Messiah. God makes promises, and he's made promises to us. Does God keep those promises? If I could preach one verse of the Bible, I would preach John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. I would preach that verse over and over and over again. Why? Because it contains the promise of God. The promise that he has made through Jesus Christ and the promise that he keeps through Jesus Christ. Palm Sunday is a day of celebration, right? It's a day of joy. It's a day of crowds coming back to church and following Jesus and preparing for the excitement that he brings because Jesus is the promise that God has made and he is the promise that God fulfills. That's Palm Sunday. That's the excitement. That's the message. The promises of God. There are some promises that God makes to us in our passage today that I think we need to look at and help understand a little more. Number one, God has promised us a Savior. A Savior. Everyone throughout history who has struggled has understood the need for a Savior. And what that means, when we think about the Psalms that David wrote, they came out of an experience of struggle, an experience of pain. And so he wrote these Psalms depicting the salvation that God gives to him. And when the crowd see Jesus come, they shout and exclaim those promises of salvation. Hosanna! 
Hosanna! And then quoting who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. He's our Savior. You see, all of us who go through a struggle understand the need for a Savior. It's just like the young mother who's heard her whole life trust in God, believe in God, and God will take care of you. She's heard that. And she's believed that for most of her life. But for the last six months, her little boy has been really sick. Really sick. And she's struggled with trying to figure out what that means and what that means for her. Her pastor, her parents, her friends, they've all said, keep the faith, things will be fine. But she begins to wonder a little bit. Of course, she puts on a strong front for her husband and for the other children. But when she's alone, it's not so easy. She sees her son. She sees him getting sick. She wonders if he's going to get well. Will, be, will he be able to, to play like he used to play? Will he be able to, to do what he used to do? What I want him to do? What will the rest of his life look like? And she has all of the questions and the, the doubts and the fears that all of us would if we were her. And maybe we've been her before. And we tell her and she hears have faith, don't worry, but we all wonder. And honestly, she hasn't prayed in about three months. The days are short, the nights are long, the loneliness is real. How can she go through it anymore? And then one night, one night it changes. She can't take anymore and she lets it all loose. She lets out all of the anger and the frustration and she pours her heart out to God and guess what God hears her he can handle the anger he can handle the frustration he can and handle the screams the shaking he hears her and he assures her I'm with you I've never left you I know that this is a difficult situation but you will get through it. And for the first time in a long time, she believes God is with her. God hears her. God will save her. Salvation is something that Jesus brings. It's something we long for. It's something we want deep in our soul. And it's something that God promises us through him. Secondly, God also promises that he is faithful. That God is going to do what he said he would do. That's what the donkey represents. That's why Jesus gets on the colt, the foal of a donkey, because the prophet Zechariah said that God's Messiah would come into Jerusalem riding on a donkey, and the people recognize it. They don't understand it, but they recognize it. And that's something very important for us. God is faithful to us. We don't always understand what he's doing. We don't always understand what's happening, but we can recognize it. We don't understand why. Why we see the violence that we see. We don't understand the anger and the hate and the discord that we see. The senseless murder of people over and over again. We don't understand it. And we ask questions. We shake our heads. We say our prayers. But we still believe that God is faithful. That if God makes a promise to us, God will deliver. Jesus shows us that, that he will deliver as promised. I think about Marty, who has really struggled to understand what God's doing in his life. His life hasn't really turned out the way he thought it would be. He had a lot of plans and hopes and dreams for his life, 
And it hasn't really worked out the way he thought. So Marty struggles with understanding God and understanding God's faithfulness. Marty doesn't like his job. He doesn't like the situation he's in. And his wife and his family, they try to assure him that he's doing good, that he's doing the best, but he's dissatisfied with it all. And it angers him that things are not happening the way he expected them to. But what Marty doesn't realize is that this life that he has has afforded him opportunities that he may not have had otherwise. For example, Marty gets home about the time his daughter gets prepared to go to school. So Marty and his daughter, they have breakfast every morning. And they have for years. And it's a beautiful time for them to connect and talk and visit. And it's so important for that development of that relationship. And one morning, Marty's daughter had thought about doing something really dumb because she had been bullied and she had dealt with all of the issues that young women deal with. And she thought she would do something really stupid, but she was going to wait. She was going to wait until she had breakfast with her dad. And over breakfast, what did her dad say? I'm so proud of you. I love you. I wouldn't change anything about you. See, God is faithful. God saves us. And God promises us delivered. We don't always understand what God is doing, do we? Do we? No. I mean, how can we? We don't have the mind of God. We have our own mind. But God is faithful. You see, that's why Jesus gets on that donkey and he rides into Jerusalem and people flock to him. It's the same reason we flock to him because we know that he provides in ways that we don't understand at the moment, but eventually we do. God is faithful. That's a promise that he makes. And finally, the one that can kind of be overlooked, God promises us that nothing can or will stop his plan. I think the last part of the passage is not the typical scene that you have for Palm Sunday, but it's in the scripture and it is so important. God has a plan and God will make sure that that plan is carried out to fruition. Nothing's going to stop God's plan, you see. Nothing. The Pharisees did not like Jesus. The scripture makes that abundantly clear. They didn't like him. They didn't like his ministry. They didn't like what he was doing. And in fact, right before Palm Sunday, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. And they said, now we have to kill him and we're going to have to kill Lazarus too. Isn't that amazing? The lack of unbelief that they had. So Jesus had to go into hiding because it wasn't time yet. But now it's time and Jesus comes out and they see the crowds, they see the people, they see the excitement and they're frustrated because they can't stop what God's plan is, right? You can't stop God's plan. We could easily miss that, that God promises that nothing's going to stop my plan. And deep down in their hearts, those Pharisees know it. You hear what they say. Look, this is getting us nowhere. The whole world's gone after him. Of course. Nothing can stop God's plan. Nothing can. The young man needs to hear that. He needs to hear that nothing will stop God's plan. He's wondered about God's plan. He's wondered and wondered what God would do in his life. A year ago, he thought he had a really strong plan. And then the pandemic happened and he spent a year trying to figure out what to do with his life. His education seems worthless. His dream career seems hopeless. It's just kind of futile for him and he doesn't know and he doesn't have direction and he, he kind of flounders and he struggles and he suffers. 
And he goes, my God, what do I do now? So what does he do? He starts packing up his belongings and just still find somewhere else to go, maybe. Maybe. And then when he's going through his stuff, he finds something, a gift, a treasure. It's a silly book. (laughs) It's a book that a lot of kids get. Oh, The Places You'll Go by Dr. Seuss. And he laughs a little bit as he opens the book and he thumbs through it and he reads and he remembers getting it and what it meant. And then he gets to the back and he remembers who gave it to him as he reads the words his late grandmother wrote. Oh, grandson, I'm so proud of you. I believe in you. I know the places you'll go. And she does more. She gives that great scripture from Jeremiah. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And he realizes God has a plan and God will fulfill that plan. Friends, that's Palm Sunday. It's the magic of it. It's the beauty of it. It's everything that it's supposed to be. It's God's message to us. The promises that God makes. And we're excited about it, aren't we? We're happy about it. Until we're not. All those crowds that got excited and they shouted Hosanna. It's it's so interesting to me how quickly that mood changed. How Hosanna went to crucify. How blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Go to you blasphemer. You enemy of God. To I don't even know who you are. The message of Palm Sunday is that promise. The burden of Palm Sunday is Are we willing to accept what God promises? Sometimes we are and sometimes we're not. Sometimes we don't like what God says. Sometimes we don't like God's time. Sometimes we don't like what God stands for. Sometimes what God instructs us to do, it bothers us. And we say, I can't do it anymore and I'm not going to do it. But not everyone does. Many turned away from Jesus. Many did. Many abandoned him. Many went astray. But not everyone did. I mean, slowly but surely, they gathered on their Palm Sunday and they cut their palm fawns and they sang their songs and they recounted the story and they continued on and it grew in momentum until here we are today. Your Palm Sunday. Your day. To decide if you hear God's promises and you believe in them. That's a choice you have to make. We all have to make it. Do we believe that God is our Savior? That He'll save us? Do we believe that God is faithful to us? That even if we don't understand what's happening, that we understand God is faithful? Do we believe that God's plan, that God's plan cannot be stopped. It's our decision. It's our day. This is our Palm Sunday. But remember this. Regardless of what you decide, regardless of choices you make and I make, this is still God's day too. And God has made His promises. And God will keep His promises. Why? Because God makes and keeps promises in Jesus. Blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord.